Today in Cyberpunk 2077, I'll be showing you how to get another iconic katana that is very easy to miss. But hopefully you have not missed it yet because that yellow handle and black blade look pretty damn cool. As far as damage goes, I would not call this the best katana in the game. However, if you build your character correctly, you can still one hit kill anything in the game with this katana dealing over a quarter of a million damage with it. So at this point, I guess it's just a matter of preference which katana you think looks cooler. So first, I'll show you guys how to get this iconic katana, and secondly, I'll show you how to upgrade and build your character to do the most damage with it. And I see over half of you watching my videos are not yet subscribed. So if you like my content, maybe consider subscribing. All those likes and subs really help the channel out. Now, the only way you can get this katana is during a side quest. So I'm going to list all of the side quests on screen leading up to the quest that you obtain this weapon, just so you don't miss it. You actually get this iconic katana during Judy's side quest, which you can start after the main quest, Automatic Love, which is rather early on in the main story. It's the quest where you have to find Evelyn and take her back to Judy's apartment. After that quest, Judy will call you up and give you a new quest called Both Sides Now. After you finish that quest, she will call you up again and you'll have to do the side quest called X Factor. Once again, for Judy. And then after you finish that, you'll get this side quest called Talking About a Revolution, which is a conversation that takes place in her apartment. And then after you've done that side quest, you will get the side quest called Piskes which is the side quest you actually finally can obtain this katana. But it's really important you know that because otherwise you'll miss it when this quest actually comes up. Now, if you're confused by any of these quests, I've already done a full walkthrough on every single one of Judy's quests. I'll link that video below for you. Now, during the Piskes side quest, you actually need to break into the Tiger Claw Don's penthouse, which is located over here in Night City in the area of Westbrook. If you go ahead and zoom in to where Japantown is, just over here, you're going to find this really large building called Mega Building H8. Now, you can actually come back to this building. However, you will not be able to access the penthouse again if you miss this weapon. So you guys can see this is the fast travel point and you'll basically come into this building just here. I'll show you the quest in a moment without actually spoiling the storyline for you guys. But um, you have to take the elevator with the team up to the maintenance area. And then from there, you'll be able to access the roof. But as you guys can see, after you've done the quest, the maintenance and roof areas will be out of order. So you can no longer access these areas and therefore you would have missed the katana. So you really do need to get it during the quest. Now you can basically follow Judy and then you'll find yourself on the roof of this building. And it is pretty much impossible to get yourself back up here again. So, you know, once you're here, you're going to want to play close attention. Now the fastest way to get to the apartment building is just by forcing open this fence here. Or you can go ahead and jump over here like so. And then you can get into the apartment downstairs by shooting this glass window. Or if you want to be more stealthy, you can go ahead and climb down this ladder just here. And run round to the front of the door over here. And then there's a bunch of enemies that you can just go ahead and kill. There'll be one behind the bar over here, another one sitting on the sofa, and another one just upstairs here. So after you've killed these guys, you can go ahead and go inside the office just here. Now as soon as you now as soon as you come into this office without spoiling anything, you will find the iconic katana on this bench just here. So go ahead and grab the iconic katana from the table. It looks so cool in black and yellow. I absolutely love the appearance of this weapon. And just so you guys know, no matter who you side with, you can still pick up this katana without spoiling anything. Um, so don't worry about like not being able to obtain it. Just depending on like what dialogue choices you make during the quest, you'll still be able to grab it no matter what. Just make sure that you pick it up before leaving the room, otherwise you can't come back in. 
Now before I show you guys how to maximize your damage with this iconic katana, let's first have a look at its iconic effect. Slightly increases electrical damage and grants a small chance to apply shock to the enemy. Non-standard attacks deal more damage. And the description reads a custom made marvel, truly one of a kind. You can attack 5 times per second with this katana and it does 243 damage per attack, obviously based on your character's perks. It also does 1216 DPS, but honestly we can do a lot more damage than that. So the first thing we're going to do is upgrade the katana to epic quality, like so. And then we're going to go ahead and upgrade it to legendary quality. Now if you guys actually get this katana at a lower level, you can still upgrade the damage once you reach level 50 even further by using the upgrade tab. As you can see, my katana maxes out at 1574 DPS, 314 damage per hit and 5 attacks per second. Now once we have upgraded the katana to legendary quality, you can see we have three mod slots that we can also add in to further increase our melee damage. I actually recommend using Scourge because you can increase the critical damage of the weapon by another 30%. Now if you're wondering how to build your character to get the most damage out of this weapon, I would recommend investing in body and reflexes. Firstly, body gives you 1.5% additional melee damage per point invested. So in total you'll have 30% extra melee damage with 20 body. And then 20 reflexes will increase your critical chance by 20% as well. In the athletic skill tree you'll also find street and chrome which increases melee damage by an additional 20% so make sure you grab this too. Now if you are using a cool build, which I actually recommend you're doing if you're going full blades, make sure you also get blood brawl which while cold blood is active increases the damage with melee weapons by another 10% at max rank. You can also further increase the critical chance and critical damage with merciless as well. And then you'll be doing even more damage than me, which obviously increases your damage with katanas. Also, if you invest in your cool stat, you will increase your crit damage by 2% per point. Now, if we have a look at the blades perks, you guys can see I've actually ignored all of the bleeding perks because they're just not very good at all. In fact, most katanas in the game, once your character's fully built, will one hit kill all the enemies. So bleeding kind of is pointless. So for the useful blades perks, you're going to want to grab Judge, Jury and Executioner to increase your damage with blades by 100% against enemies with max health. This will basically guarantee that you one hit kill everybody. Obviously the Fiery Blast perk is really good early on in the game because it increases damage by 3% for every 1% of health the enemy is missing. But later on in the game you're just one hit killing everything anyway so it becomes pretty pointless. Next we have Shifting Sands. Dodging recovers 15% stamina. This is nice because it also pairs with this perk over here. Float like a butterfly. Dodging increases damage with blades by 50% for 5 seconds. So every time you dodge and then attack, it basically gives you a huge damage buff. Then we also have Roaring Waters. Strong attacks with blades deal 50% more damage. This is a no-brainer. Flight of the Sparrow. Reduce the stamina cost for all attacks with blades by 50%. Obviously a nice addition. Sting like a bee. Increase attack speed with blades by 30%. This allows you to attack 5 times per second which is kind of pointless really by the time you get that far but offensive and defensive. Attacks with blade deal 300% more damage if they're defensive attacks meaning if you dodge and then counter attack. This also stacks with unbroken spirit. Successful counter attacks with blades restore 25% health and stamina. Death bolt is for survivability so while wielding a blade defeating an enemy restores 20% health and increases movement speed by 30% for 5 seconds. Basically basically making you unkillable. And then Blessed Blade, increase crit chance with blades by another 20%. And then finally we have Dragon Strike. You want to put 25 points into this perk because it increases crit damage with blades by a total of 25% once you've done so, which just gives you even more damage, as if you needed any. And as you're leveling up your blade skill, you also unlock perks that increase your critical damage with blades even further. So make sure you max out your blade skill too. So that was my full guide on how to obtain to Sumatogi, and I've probably butchered the name. I avoided saying it the entire video. So guys, if you enjoyed it, please do subscribe and drop a like if you have the time. And there's a whole playlist linked down below in the description on every single iconic weapon you can get in the game. 
So if you are a collector like me, check that playlist out below, and I'll see you in the next one.